So that's looking pretty good. So model items, one of the really nice benefits of it is that when you bring it in, it's actually bringing in the dimensions from the model, including the tolerances from the model and the precision from the model. So this guy right here, 1.457 plus one minus zero. Now this one's gonna be kind of a, a problematic area. As we'll see later on, asymmetric tolerances are not always the best uh, for communicating to machinists if you're sharing 3D models. Um, this guy right here is, is a plus one minus zero, meaning any rounding is a significant portion of the tolerance value. And we gotta be real careful with that. So for something like this, I wanna come in here and change the, uh, the tolerance values to at least more than you know, one value in the uh, decimals. Now the other thing I wanna do is just double click this value because I wanna double check what it is actually. And because we have 1.457, you'll see when we open it up, it actually is rounding up to one from 1.4566. That means the nominal value because it's got a minus zero, the nominal value is not even in its own tolerance. This is a great way to sabotage yourself and your company and your, your machinist, because if they're going off the 3D model, assuming that it's accurate and you have rounding going on, you're going to have problems. Now, we, we have to have rounding on. We don't want to have 18 decimals here. That's not appropriate. Uh, I've gotten clearance from the designer, from the engineer, to say, let's just make it 1.457. And now the 3D model, I'll have to rebuild it, but the 3D model is now updated its geometry and it's no longer ambiguous. Just be real careful when you have anything like that, you're always rounding. So if you have a part like this where it's either reverse engineered or converted from metric, uh, you just wanna pay close attention. Another thing going on with model items that's negative, not a positive, is that the dimensions coming in are based on the features and sketches as you drew them. Remember in this case I had a uh, fully you know detailed out uh, part with ribs and things like that and then I just extruded geometry over all of that to kind of swallow it up and simplify it. These dimensions don't have any relevance anymore so I'm going to delete those. Uh, I can always come back in and add manually add anything I need later. So this one also is wrong. Notice that's a little bit off, so pay real close attention when you're using model items. But all in all, that looks fairly good. I'm feeling all right about this. A couple things I, I noticed too. If you see this, 2.933 plus or minus two thousandths, and it's got an oval around it. Now that oval used to be called a critical dimension inside SolidWorks. They've since changed the name to inspection dimension, uh, but in the ASM, ASME and the various other standards, there is no actual standard for this oval. Now it's recognized typically in the quality circles as an inspection dimension. But in this case, we are actually going to create an explicit inspection drawing. So there's a debate, and I think you need to be very careful about you know having this discussion within your company. There's a debate about whether or not to add something like that when you plan on basically creating an inspection report uh, that in, you know explicitly says that's a an important one to go for. You may recognize it as a key characteristic, but that's again up to you and your company to make sure you understand it. When I was coordinating with my machinist in Arizona, uh, he did not recognize that and didn't know what it meant, and he was either going to ignore it or ask about it. So last thing you want to do is create a bunch of additional work or confusion. This is all about people communicating here. So be very careful and pay close attention to um, the training and capabilities and the understanding of everybody in the loop.